Hey guys, JJ here. In this lesson, I'll be talking to you guys about heme catabolism or heme breakdown. Now, in your body, your red blood cells are continually turning over or being degraded in a process called hemolysis. Now, your, a red blood cell is just a non-nucleated cell that is mainly composed of a protein called hemoglobin. So a red blood cell is just pretty much like a bag of hemoglobin. It doesn't really have any other organelles, doesn't have mitochondria, doesn't have a nucleus. It just is composed of hemoglobin. Now, when your red blood cell is broken down, it'll release hemoglobin. Now, hemoglobin is a protein, um, a protein molecule that contains uh, four polypeptide chains, uh, two alpha-like chains, and two beta-like chains with a heme prosthetic group. Now, the heme prosthetic group contains an iron moiety in the center of it, which allows it to bind to oxygen. Now, what will happen is the hemoglobin and um, in the, in the other components of the broken down red blood cell will be taken up by the reticuloendothelial system. Now, now, you may be wondering, okay, what is the reticuloendothelial system? Well, the reticuloendothelial system is just your, your white blood cells, macrophages and other white blood cells, so your leukocytes. So um, your, your white blood cells will come along, they'll, they'll engulf um, the, the red blood cell remnants uh, along with hemoglobin. And what they'll do is uh, hemoglobin will actually um, be processed into um, heme, and um, the, the protein portion of hemoglobin, the polypeptide chains, will be broken down into free amino acids, which can be used later to uh, produce other proteins. Now, heme, the heme group itself is, is, is toxic. The, the, the body needs to get rid of it in some way. So what it'll, what it'll do is it'll actually convert heme um, by the enzyme heme oxygenase. It'll convert heme into biliverdin. Um, by the enzyme heme oxygenase. Now I've got the uh, the text here, the biliverdin text in uh, green color, and, and that's because biliverdin is actually green in color. It's it's pigmented, um, and it's it's has a greenish color. And so um, the there's a few things that'll that'll be required in this process um, from heme to biliverdin, and those those things are that um, what you'll need to undergo this process is that um, you'll need three oxygen and um, an NADPH to um, perform this, uh, this conversion from heme to biliverdin. And what will also be produced from this reaction is carbon monoxide, um, which will be exhaled. And you'll also actually release the iron from the, uh, from the heme group. So you can see here biliverdin actually is missing iron. So that iron will actually be um, stored as ferritin or hemosiderin within the uh, white blood cell. Now, once you have biliverdin, what will happen is it'll undergo another enzymatic reaction um, by the enzyme biliverdin reductase to bilirubin. Now, like biliverdin, bilirubin is actually a pigmented chemical, and it's actually orange in coloration. Now, like, um, like the previous reaction, um, the reaction from biliverdin to bilirubin also requires NADPH. So just remember, guys, that um, for, this, for these these couple of steps, you need NADPH. Now, NADPH is produced from the pentose phosphate pathway, so just remember that. And also an important note is that um, since these are both pigmented chemicals, this is um, this is actually the cause of the, the a change in coloration of bruising. So when you bruise, uh, you'll have a uh, breakdown of, of red blood cells, you'll get biliverdin, and then it'll be converted slowly into bilirubin. So that's why you see that change in coloration in your tissue from a bruise. So I thought that was just interesting information. Now, once you have bilirubin, what'll happen is uh, the bilirubin is actually, uh, it's lipophilic. It's, it doesn't, it's, it's not, um, it's actually not, uh, hydrophilic in nature so it needs to be conjugated uh, so at this point when you're in the blood when you have bilirubin in your bloodstream it's actually it, it, it has a hard time um, being transported through the blood because of the blood is an aqueous solution so what it'll have to do is bilirubin will have to be bound to um, albumin and again albumin as always is the most uh, abundant protein uh, our most abundant protein in your serum. Uh, so then bilirubin gets bound to albumin and transported in the blood. So once once that happens, your uh, your blood will, as always, go to 
to your your liver. Now, what will happen is uh, the albumin will drop off um, bilirubin to your uh, to your liver, so to a hepatocyte. So your bilirubin is released into the hepatocyte. It actually binds to a receptor known as ligandin. I don't have it in the scheme, but it's called ligandin. Then bilirubin is actually conjugated to UDP glucuronide. Um, so in actuality, it's actually two UDP glucuronides that are conjugated to um, bilirubin um, by an enzyme called UDP glucuronyl transferase 1 and 2. There's actually two enzymes that uh, perform this process. And then you'll have um, a conjugated bilirubin, so a conjugated uh, uh, a bilirubin glucuronide or a bilirubin with two glucuronate um, uh, moieties attached to it. So once you have that conjugated bilirubin in your hepatocyte, what will happen is it will be released and incorporated into bile within the gallbladder. Now when bile is released from your gallbladder into your small intestine, it will also release the bilirubin as well. So bilirubin is then released into your small intestine. Now since your small intestine is just full of intestinal bacteria or intestinal flora, those intestinal bacteria will actually oxidize the bilirubin into something called urobilinogen. Urobilinogen will then also be processed again by other species of intestinal bacteria into stercobilin. Um, and stercobilin is actually also a pigmented chemical. And um, this stercobilin will actually be excreted in your feces. Now, stercobilin is actually brown in coloration. That's why, the, that's why your feces are actually brown in coloration. Now, not all urobilinogen will actually be converted into stercobilin in the stomach intestine. Some of it will actually be released into, or will actually be reabsorbed back into your blood, uh, bloodstream or into a blood vessel. And what will happen is it'll be transported in your blood, and urobilinogen will be transported in your blood to the kidneys. And then what will happen is the urobilinogen will be converted into urobilin, which is then excreted in your urine. Now, urobilin, again, is a pigmented molecule, um, and it's uh, yellow, uh, yellowish in coloration, which is the reason why your urine is yellow. So I thought that was interesting, guys, that um, this, this is kind of the main reasons for why you see different discoloration in different, uh, different areas of your body. So just as a summary of heme catabolism, we have uh, red blood cells, um, I, and I just want to give you some, some quick, um, quick facts about red blood cells. Each red blood cell has approximately 270 million hemoglobin molecules. So every time um, your red blood cell is being broken down by hemolysis, you're getting a, a, a humongous release of, of hemoglobin that needs to be um, processed and um, the heme groups need to be uh, excreted from the body. Um, a typical red blood cell has a lifespan of 100, 120 days, so as you can imagine, this process is continually going on. You always have uh, different aged uh, red blood cells that are continually being broken down. And because there's a continuous breakdown um, of red blood cells, there's actually 100 to 200 million red blood cells are broken down each hour. And um, red blood cells are typically broken down um, within the spleen because the spleen um, has very small vessels um, which the blood cells go through. They get squeezed through the spleen and, and they, um, they, the spleen kind of just tests their, 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 uh, the strength of red blood cell membrane. And if the red blood cell is old or damaged, it'll be broken down in the spleen. But red blood cells are also broken down at a smaller degree in the liver as well. Now for hemoglobin, hemoglobin um, about six grams per day of hemoglobin is degraded um, in your in the body, just because you can imagine there's a lot of hemoglobin molecules being broken down all the time. Now for bilirubin, there's about 300 milligrams per day of bilirubin being produced, and now in adults, um, the 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 um, blood serum level of bilirubin. Um, is actually typically um, looked at in a couple different ways. Um, conjugated bilirubin uh, typically is in concentrations ranging from 0 to 5 micromolars per liter or 0 to 0 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. And the total amount of bilirubin in blood serum is 3 to 22 micromolar per liter or um, 0 0.2 to 1.3 milligrams per deciliter. 
Now, neonates are a different story. Neonates um, have conjugated levels of bilirubin, um, anywhere from 0 to 10 micromolars uh, per liter or 0 to 0 0.6 milligrams per deciliter. So they have a, a, a double, they can, they can go up to double the amount that, that adults um, have. And they also have higher total amounts of um, bilirubin. So they go from anywhere from 1.7 to 180 micromolars per liter or 1 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter. So that means that neonates have a, typically have a larger range that you can that is considered to be normal. Anyways, guys, that was heme catabolism. I hope that helped. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like um, this video. It, it is greatly appreciated as always. Um, and please subscribe to my channel. Um, all your help um, is, is greatly appreciated. And thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you have a great day.